Yeah. If you're trying to figure out what this is, I'm not going to tell you. But if you already know what it is, you know I'm going to enjoy it. God's been dealing with me lately. God deals with you. It's always rough. Hmm. Man. And tough. Mm. And horrible. Oh. Disgusting. Strawberry. Chocolate covered. Oh, man. But God didn't give me a course correction. Kind of talking to me about video and first love and, you know, the things that we all do, you know, living in these last days, and, you know, going on the internet, and doing those things. perfect strawberry and you know I seen you on the internet when you see me you know some of you are real bitter you know kind of upset about government taxes life in general the end of the world complaining about this whining about that you know normal everyday stuff. Well, it kind of got to me. Oh man, that's good. It kind of began to affect me. That wasn't so bad. But usually, when things bug me, you know, I take it to the Lord and pray and Things change and he goes after those people or whatever the circumstances are. Man, he just wipes them out. <laughs> but this was different. This began to affect my spirit. It began to kind of hurt my soul. I began to kind of act like some of you, you know, that are all bummed out and blown out. And Man, this is good. You know, worried about tomorrow and today and the next day. So then it began to affect my my job performance, so to speak, or I should say those things I was doing in the ministry began to become obvious that, man, it wasn't quite so joyful, you know, it wasn't so... Oh, man. That's delicious. It wasn't so sweet. You know, it was like work. You know, kind of hard to inspire people when you're really working at it, you know? It's kind of hard to tell them about how wonderful God is when you're really kind of bummed out about how terrible His people are. <laughs> so I began to examine myself. I began to say, Lord, what's wrong? So I looked at all the areas of my life and, you know, personal sins that, you know, of course, I'm still working on. <laughs> Boy, do I got a list of those. <laughs> but it didn't seem to be in my personal sins. You know, it wasn't like I was winning or losing. Okay, maybe I'm losing more than I'm winning, but, you know, God's still working on me. He's changing me and arranging me. Oh man, that's good. You gotta get one of these. So, as I looked at that and realized, well, it's not there, I kept praying and then things began to happen in the ministry. Little kind of warning signs that maybe God's blessing isn't there, you know, like things began to get a little rough, a little tough, began to not quite work out right. And I kept thinking, Lord, 
Am I working too hard? Am I not hearing your voice? Am I not listening very well? So it's been going on for about, oh, I don't know, two or three days, you know, and God and I have been kind of working on that, where I'm trying to get my ears clear. I even took a cotton swab, you know, kind of swabbed out my ears just to make sure. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes practical applications work in the spiritual realm, sort of. But, you know, I, I re-examined my, my studies and kind of my ministry and the things that I was doing, you know, with the Lord and kind of like, well, you know, it doesn't feel right, you know, and so what's wrong? And then suddenly it dawned on me. Hmm. There was no fruit. It was kind of like going through the motions, but not enjoying the fruit of it. You know, like the flowers. Man, look at these flowers. Isn't that awesome? This is what God has grown, you know, and it's just wonderful. You know, I've been able to settle in, make myself at home, and share that with you on videos. And but I wasn't enjoying it, you know, and the tomato plants have grown, but I wasn't really enjoying it. I was still doing the work every day, and I was like, man, I'm tired at the end of the day. I'm exhausted. I'm worn out. And it wasn't quite the same spirit, you know. It wasn't quite the same love and devotion that I saw some of the older videos, and I looked at them, and I thought, man, you know, that guy's happy. <laughs> That guy's living it. Yeah, that guy's enjoying it, you know. And I thought, well, Lord, what's up? And God just simply said, relax. Be you and who you are. And you know, then I kind of thought about that. And I thought, you know, I'm the guy who always had a sense of humor in the midst of trials and tribulations. I'm the guy that kind of laughed at people when they were all worked up and worked out and blown out about what they thought they knew about scriptures in the end times and really didn't know and I knew a lot more than what I ever said because frankly God would tell me and I'd keep it to myself you know and wouldn't tell anyone you know? kind of like between your Lord and I it's kind of like you know there's a lot more about the end of the world than you realize <laughs> some of you better get your act together <laughs> oh boy are you in for a surprise but besides that you know I kind of was always given this ability to kind of inspire people to look at and enjoy God for who he is because of what God has done. And so I began to realize that I wasn't doing what I was created to do, which is to worship God, to enjoy him, to know him in a personal and intimate way. That somehow in ministry I had backed off my development in knowing him. You know, kind of like what I've been telling you to do. You know, get to know him better than I know him. Well, shoot, I began to act like I didn't know him. Kind of like what some of you act like. You know, you act like you know him, but then you go out and do everything else except what he says to do. You know, like get involved in politics, you know, try to change the world, you know. Yeah, that's going to last. <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> the last election, let's see, that was four years ago, more or less. And how did that work out? Oh, not so good. Okay, now the new election, you really think it's going to work out for you? Hmm. <laughs> Me, I'm getting a kick out of it. The last election, I kind of laughed because I said, well, here we go. <laughs> and the new election, I'm looking at the candidate, and I'm going, okay, so we got these two candidates. I'm going, well, this ought to be interesting. <laughs> here we go. So it's kind of humorous to see how people get wrapped up their emotions in something other than devotion to God. Because they get so carried away they don't take the time to pray or to enjoy what they've done or what they're doing. As a matter of fact, they kind of sacrifice Jesus all over again on the cross because they just ignore him as though he weren't real or alive. You know, I ask people, you even sometimes, you know, I ask you on the internet, you know, if I've met you, hey, you know, did you pray today? Did you ask Jesus about it? What did Jesus tell you to do today? You know, and some of you get really offended. Oh, how dare you judge me? Well, <laughs> if I don't judge you, you know, God will, and guess what? <laughs> Better to get some judgment from me, you know, hoo -hoo, that I give mercy and grace than judgment from him, which he may, like, say, huh, you're blowing it, dude, you know, and <laughs> slap you around. So, 
frankly, have you been talking to the Lord lately? <laughs> I have, and I got busted, you know. And God kind of turned me around and said, "Look, Michael, I put you in this world to rejoice and be glad, because this is the day that I've made. I put you in this world to inspire people to know me in a more intimate and personal way than they ever known before. So, what are you doing?" Oh well, gee, Lord, I've been kind of like you know, telling people about you know what they ought to do, and I kind of haven't been doing it myself. You know, I've been kind of like you know missing out on the fruit. You know, strawberries and those tomatoes. You know, they've been kind of stalled because it's been such cold weather. And then I began to realize cold weather, cold fronts. You know darkness, rain, you know, kind of bummer stuff, I began to realize, you know, I don't think I've been such a blessing as much as I've been such a bummer, where people have kind of said, well, you know, yeah, you know, it's been kind of, you know, inspiring, but, you know, at the end of the day, did I feel like I was a blessing? No, I felt like I was on a bummer. <laughs> Because you see, when it comes out of wellsprings of living water, not only does it does it, that's the way we use it. Not only does it splash outward, but it splashes backward. So it splashes outward and backward. So it's kind of like splish splash. We were taking a bath, and I remember in the old days, like old Greg Laurie, you know, when he was full of fun and you know joy and laughing and carrying on. Because I don't really see him so laughing anymore, you know. But when he was less than serious. You know, he wrote these like been born again cartoons that you know show living water how it's gushed out and gushed in you know and it kind of went which which now it's like kind of you see all these great men of God you know and they kind of like are getting to become great men of God and not so joyful but you know there is hope because you know I kind of I kind of looked at Chuck Smith the other day you know and he's going through this kind of like cancer thing you know and I kind of looked at that smile you know and that twinkle in the eye and I kind of thought, man, he didn't change. <laughs> so, what's wrong with me? What happened? How did I get so kind of like sidetracked so shortly in the ministry? Although it's been a long time, 30 so one years. But still, how did I kind of get like, you know, off track just slightly that nobody could ever see, you know, on videos because they can't really tell. But, Lord, how did I just get kind of like influenced by people as opposed to changing them but them changing me I began to act like and feel like Aaron you know instead of Moses you know Aaron you know how people came up to him and said hey build us a calf we want a golden calf so he says okay well bring me the golden earrings you know and I'll do it you know and then when he got confronted he said I, I the fire you know everything went in the fire and it jumped out you know yeah right <laughs> Moses said sure Aaron okay We'll make you number one, right? You're number two, <laughs> and you're gonna stay there. But hey, you know, being influenced by people, we all have that ability to do that. You see, God created each one of us to be unique and distinctive in a different way in a different setting. But put into a perfect place that God wants us to grow in, then we should reflect that in our lives. It should become a joy, and it should become obvious to us that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is coming, that Jesus is going to take us home, that we're not satisfied with this world. Like the song says, all I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take the world and give me Jesus. This is not where I belong. So I guess the question comes up. <laughs> Uh, where do you belong? Uh, are you kind of like making bacon, you know, kind of like, you know, you're out there, you know, soldering the hogs, you know, and kind of slopping the, you know, junk in the mud pen, you know, and slinging the dirt and getting dirty and, you know, chomping bacon and, you know, making it sound like it's something wonderful and great to, you know, smell. It smells good. Tastes good. Mm, but somehow it just doesn't work out so good, does it? <laughs> mm. But, you know. Man, that's sweet. And even if it wasn't, when God poured on that chocolate of grace, you didn't know chocolate's grace? 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, anyways, <laughs> put chocolate over it and it goes good with anything. Just ask any woman. <laughs> sorry. Little bias and prejudice, sir. But when you have the ability to choose between fruit and kind of like meat, I don't know about you, but you know, I've seen everybody with their meat, you know, how they get all theological on you. They're going to work it all out for you. You know, they're going to give you all their, you know, PhDs, PhDs, and, you know, FFDs and BFDs and all the other DDDs, you know, and working it out for you. And then you got kind of like the rest of us, you know, poor people who just kind of go, man, I see, you know, like a strawberry patch. Let's go check it out. Let's go grab some and eat some. You know, and you just eat your fill and you enjoy it and then you wash off your face, you know, and you, hey, check it out. There's an apple tree. Let's go see if the apples are ripe. You know, and you kind of enjoy the fruit of it. Well, I think that's kind of what we needed to get back to in Vidigo. Enjoying the fruit of the labor that God has done with all those that have come before us. That this is the last generation and we're going to go out with a bang. <laughs> we're going to go out with joy. We're going to rejoice until the day of salvation because it draws nigh even closer than what we first assumed it to be. That though it may not happen in 2012, man, starting in 2013, it's going to rush at us like a choo-choo train. And we're jumping on board and we're heading down the tracks because we're staying on the straight and narrow and we're not going to the left or the right. And we're not going back, but we're going forward. So God kind of did a correction with me and says, hey, you know, if I have chosen you, then you need to spend time with me. You need to reveal that you have been with me and shine the same way that Moses glowed from that time that he spent with me. You need to be my servant. You need to be me as I live in you and you live in me. Maybe you need a course correction today. I don't know. I'm just saying. We're going to do some things in video that, you know, we're going back to that we used to do. And that's one of them is to, uh, we're going to read from K. Arthur's books, you know, because we were doing a lot of videos today, you know, and doing like two or three of them, you know. Well, that's good. You know, that's a good thing. Two a day is nice, but we only need one. So video today is probably going back to what? You know, we got video meditation, which we do every morning, you know. It's kind of like cool because it's from Joyce Myers, you know, and she kind of like seems to tell you where the devil's at and tell you where you're at and tell you what you can do about it. <laughs> and we're going to, you know, we're going to kind of wrap out about, you know, the other part where, you know, what they're doing with Countdown. Uh, God knows. <laughs> but I know that they're from somewhere, you know, and I don't know where they're from, but you know what? They're kind of doing one of these things. Oh, wow. You know, and so we'll do that, you know, and then video today, of course, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, enjoying the garden time, you know, it's kind of like relaxing and smelling the roses, you know, and just talking about the day, you know, and enjoying it from either daily light or from whatever. But we've decided to add some things, and you're going to go out of our way now to purchase, you know, Chuck's book about, I think, what was it, uh, his devotional book of some kind, and, you know, start reading that and sharing that in video. But we decided to go back to adding, you know, speak to my heart, God, some meditation from Kay Arthur, you know, and you know, she's always a joy because... And she's always got the right word, you know. She's just, she's like a, a Paul, you know, a female Paul. <laughs> she's always got the right word, man. It's just like, she, she knows it. <laughs> she knows the word. You know, then we're also doing, you know, some of the other books that we read. But we're going to do more of that in sharing in Vidibo's devotions, you know, and expanding back to the reality of hearing, seeing, and knowing and relating Jesus as he lives in us and as we apply it to our living arrangements, whatsoever life that God has placed us in. Because really, you're here for a reason, and you're designed for a purpose, and you were born for such a time as this. And being such as you are, I hope that I can inspire you to go far beyond what you are, to become more of what who, to become more of who he is, so that you may be all that he wants you to accomplish in this life, as well as all that he wants to do in you. Because you don't have much time left. I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, I've been kind of looking around going, it don't look so good. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's beginning to look like better smell and the roses quick because I think seasons, they are a-changing, you know? And 
Ooh, man. I don't know about a bad moon rising, but... Huh. Ah. Things are beginning to change quite a bit, seriously. And we're going to laugh about it. We're going to talk about it, share, you know, and relate that. Because, you know, for me, it's all old nature. You know, I already know all this stuff. You know, it's kind of like, man, I learned that way back when. You know, we were in Jesus moving. We were talking about this for 20 years now. You know, it's not like we invented something new, like those new prophecy teachers that are trying to make Islam the bad guy or something new out of something that's not been spoken of in scriptures. You know, we don't do that here. <laughs> we just stick with what God said. <laughs> I don't need to make up new things for God. God can do just fine on his own. But what we want to do is to remind you that you have an ear. And that ear was designed to hear Jesus speak. You have eyes and your eyes were meant to see Jesus as he reveals himself to you. You have a mouth and your mouth was meant to speak the glorious praises of Jesus as he has become the Son of God and is our Lord and Master and Savior as well as the love of our life. So we should be talking about him. And you have a heart that should be in love with Jesus to a way that you've never imagined before because as you've heard him speak to you audibly, as you've seen him appear to you physically, as you've spoken to him verbally, then you're going to know, guess what? He's alive. Oh my God. Christianity's real. Yeah. Oops. Yay. I think. And then you'll figure out what you're supposed to do. Because <laughs> right now, I don't think you have a clue. Mm -hmm. And neither do I.